Well, thanks for joining us for another Sanjero adventure. This time we're off to Lady Musgrave for about seven days. Oh, it's poor jalapeno shit or something. So with all the uh, provisions loaded on board, it was time to uh, get going. This trip was a little different in that we weren't taking the Boston Whaler we normally take. Um, one of the boys, uh, Paul, had, has since bought a uh, Carbo 38 Express sports fishing boat. So they were going to come up the next day and meet us up there. Something a little different for this year was the, uh, as you can see all the boats there on the screen, all the yachts, they're all competing in the inaugural Brisbane to Hamilton Island yacht race. I know you all love a quick look around the engine room. They are one of the features of these beautiful Nordhaven boats. Um, as you can see there, that's the wing motor. So it's a separate engine with its own shaft and feathering propeller. They call it the get home engine in case you had a catastrophic breakdown on the main. That's all our fuel management system, which we can look at a bit more later. So as we made our way out of the bay, it wasn't long obviously before the maxi racing yachts started to catch us. What are they going about? This was pretty exciting stuff for the owner and I. We're both uh, uh, sailors. I mean, I'm an old dinghy sailor, but the owner of St. Gero's done a lot of yachting in his time. So uh, watching these things come past was just spectacular. Obviously we kept out of their way uh, even had to do a U-turn one stage to let Blackjack come across the top of us. But what a spectacle. They are truly amazing boats. So it was a bit of a funny situation in that they also were trying to keep out of the East Australian current, which put us all close to shore, which continued all night. And in fact, we won the inaugural unofficial race, which was the first boat to break sea spit at the top of Fraser Island. <laughs> Not very often a bunch of uh, maxis are beaten by a uh, nine knot Nordhaven. But once the breeze filled in, boy did they take off. So we eventually got to Musgrave at about 3 p.m. the evening before, and uh, this is early morning on the next day. Conditions weren't too bad, but we had no game boat at this stage. So it was just the three of us on board, which was a fantastic opportunity to get some extra jobs done. a few things ticked off the list. 
Tommy and I thought there was time to have a quick fish, see what we could find. We need rod holders. All good? Yeah. That one just ahead, maybe? So we took some pillies with us and some lures obviously. Idea was to do a bit of a sort of floating some pillies down around various <laughs> bommies looking for a trout. No last pilly. Gets the worm. Like a shark or not? Yeah, right. Oh, bad luck, mate. <laughs> last, that was the last pilly. All right. So coincidentally, a good mate of mine, Pete, who's just hey, bought mate. the Alua, arrived with the, all his family and friends on board. So uh, we ended up having a great few catch-ups with those guys, as you'll see. So it was such beautiful conditions, we thought the best way to all catch up is the sunset drinks in on the beach. So these poor guys, it's a timely reminder to anyone that's sort of spending time around reefs. The bommies are very hard to see early and that poor guy on the right there found one. He was stuck hard but he managed with the help of his two other friends who were cruising with him, they managed to pull him off for no apparent damage. Very lucky escape and in fact I saw these guys on a trip after this right up at Island Head Creek. So. They were still having a good time, which is good. So in the distance there is the Carbo coming in hot and uh, everyone was a bit excited because it meant we could do some proper fishing. So they literally tied up for about 20 minutes and we were out of there again. Keen to wet a line. And I love these little carbos. Fast too, that's 35 knots there. I used to skip a one called the Carbolito, a 38. And uh, we caught some great blue marlin out of Brisbane on it. But these guys were keen to bottom fish. It wasn't really the right time of year to go looking for blue marlin out there, but I think there are a few around, but not in numbers yet.
So that's Pete proudly showing off his Spanish mackerel on the transom there. So they did well. But we found it pretty tough going on the bottom, and uh, but we put a feed together. I know, it seems indulgent endlessly filming Sanjero as I go around and round in the dinghy, but I'm just admiring the polish work. We are boat polish is my business, and uh, she's looking magnificent. If I do say so myself. So we woke to another sunny day, but you can't tell, but it was actually quite cold and we did have about 15 to 20 knots of southerly there, so, but that didn't stop us. After brekkie, it was off fishing again. And, oh, oh <laughs> proudly sponsored. And, and prepared by the man himself. Been two years. Oh yeah, that's the way. Put your back Oh, hey! Oh, you flooded it. Oh, you flooded it. Uh, not an anchor. Oh. Hey! It's you! It's a trim. He didn't turn. Your life jacket. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, you went there with me! Oh, While that ship of fools headed for the beach, we packed up the bigger dinghy and went in also for an afternoon drink session. You could actually tuck around the back of the island here out of the wind and it was just like magic as you can see. So another beautiful dawn, another sunny day, but unfortunately the wind was on. We had closer to 20 knots southerly. So we thought we'd do a bit of trolling to start off the day.
Pretty rare to find that but those white spots are some sort of parasite so of course we didn't eat that fish ah. so one of our new guests Bill sitting on the bow there is a good Greek boy and he wanted to treat us all with a souvla which is uh, basically chunks of meat cooked on a skewer over charcoals so we all went ashore for a big afternoon cook up Enjoy these beautiful conditions. <laughs> Uber. Will it work? So while Paul executes the perfect pencil dive, we contemplated what to do. It was windier than the day before and colder. We're all keen to get out there and have another bottom fish. an exciting moment when someone gets their first big red emperor. So, a lovely morning, wind had dropped out quite significantly and uh, we took off early to take advantage of it, have another bottom fish. Fish. Oh. 
Bit of filmy releasing. Eating the water. Proof. So back into the lagoon for a nice afternoon, relax. It was also time to fuel up the carbo because they were going to get going first thing in the morning back to Brisbane. So I rigged up this fuel system here where I use the uh, transfer pump, pump it through, and uh, it worked a treat. So the boys were cooking up an absolute storm this evening. In fact, every night's beautiful food. So, can't thank them enough. So, as you can see, conditions had really moderated, <clears throat> which was perfect timing for the Carbo boys. They thought they'd take advantage of it and fish their way south on some of those grounds up off uh, the top of Fraser and See you, mate. working their way home to Brisbane. Conditions this good, we had to go into the beach again, have yep. a swim. And it was also perfect conditions to put the drone up, see if we can get some nice footage of uh, Lady Musgrave Lagoon and the boat. And it was time for us to stow the tender on the foredeck and get ready for an early departure the next day. But while doing that, incredibly, a tender appeared out of nowhere, which happened to be my cousin David, who was out there in his little small boat with his wife for the whole week, would you believe? But he is a uh, qualified super yacht captain, and this was just his uh, week or two off, so. So we waited for the sun to come up enough to make our way out of the lagoon and avoid all those bombies. That's the sonar, that's obviously a great help as well. There were still lots of whales around, even though it was the tail end of the season. They were all heading south again. But this water is so good all the way down to Fraser that we had to run some lures of course. And would you believe it, within about 10 minutes we both watched a marlin come up grab the lure and pull a bit of line but drop yeah. it. Yeah. Not since I... Uh, Did you see him too? Oh yeah. Dorsal fin out. Fill out. Yeah. As we watch the sunset over Fraser Island and these beautiful whales doing their synchronised breaching, we uh, thought it'd better be time to pull the lures in and get some dinner on the go.
So with just the three of us on board, we were doing three hour watches on our own, on each watch, but that worked. I, I had the watch here until 9 p.m. And then I got six hours until I got up for my 3 a.m. Well, good morning. We've just done an all-nighter from Lady Musgrave back to our home port. We're just off the Sunshine Coast now, so we should be into Brisbane around the middle of the day. Been an amazing night, flat calm all the way down the outside of Fraser. Just got lucky. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, so thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. All the best, cheers.